So if we now look at the F756 now, which is the superset uh, variant of the device, we've got a nice block diagram that Sam showed earlier on. Mine's a little more colourful than Sam's was. It's a bit monotone over there in the marketing people. So here we've pretty much looked at the core, the bus structure and the memory structures. That's what we've been looking at up to now. So we're now going to have a look at the rest of the device. The F4 is 100% pin compatible with the F7 with the exception of the 100 pin package. So all the other boards that you, or all the other packages that you have, 216 BGA, the F7 will sit directly on the same socket uh, as the F4 board. So hardware wise, there's no layout uh, changes required apart from to accommodate any of the new periphery that we've gained inside the device. Most of the other features that have got red boxes round have been modified in some way. So there's been some enhancements to them, either it be memory size or how the features work uh, within the device. So if we now do a proper comparison between the F429 and the F756, if we look at the power supply section, uh, power rails are exactly the same. We've now added a dedicated VDD USB line. So we've taken a standard USB line that was already on the device and converted it into a dedicated VDD USB. So it can help uh, certain application areas with power for the USB. We've added an extra tamper pin. That's just a, a dual function to a standard GPIO. So be, again, there's no change to your hardware layout. Core speed now has jumped up to 216 megahertz. I think most of those hands-on examples, we were showing 200 megahertz as the operating speed. So as the qualification has been finished for the device, uh, we've now met the specification of 216. With the parts available today, one meg flash is the largest, but we don't have the dual bank features inside today. That will arrive in the two meg variants which are due out uh, about Easter time next year. Sampling should be around December time. So we will add the two meg dual bank read well right back into the family. Backup registers stay the same. You've just gained a few more there. Watchdog, no changes. External memory bus, no changes. CRC, no change. I squared C. SPI and USART, we've made some enhancements to the periphery of those three comms channels. So therefore, you don't have 100% software compatibility anymore. So you will have to check to see what the enhancement is and make sure that the registers are being configured correctly. If you're using the HAL, there might be extra commands that have now been added to cover some of the newer features that have changed inside the devices. So you can't just recycle the software 100% for those peripherals. You will need to check. If you don't need those new peripherals and your register configurations aren't changing those peripherals, then yes, your software will work, but you do need to check it. Nothing changes in USB. We've added a new feature into the uh, high-speed USB, but it doesn't impact any of the software compatibility. Timers are exactly the same. We've gained a new timer. I'll show that a bit later on in the slides. RTC is the same. Camera module, SAI, and external SD card have stayed the same. So no changes to any software that you've previously written for any of those elements of the application. Same goes for most of the complex peripherals as well. We've not changed any of them at all. All your software is 100% compatible with what we've got there. The ADCs, we've not changed any of the way they work. We've just changed which timer trigger channels are allocated to each of the ADC peripherals in there. So you've got three ADC cells inside there. Uh, the timer triggers that we've got connected to each of those cells has changed slightly. So you've still got them, but it might not be timer one, channel four anymore. It might be timer one, channel three. And we've added three nice new peripherals to this device compared to the F4. 
So we'll have a look at these three peripherals as well. So you've seen all that already in the previous slides. Um, so there's your RAM memory map. So your ITCM is dedicated range, DTCMs are dedicated range, and then the rest of the RAM that sits on the internal bus is uh, all linear. There's your main memory map, a bit more colourful than the one that's on your slide. And there's the external memory map that we have 